No Man's Sky. If you have not heard about this game, then you are in for a real treat. This game was announced back in December of 2013, and is scheduled to release on August 9th of this year. With this game being so close to being released to the public, I thought now would be a better time than ever to finally talk about it. I'm going to be discussing pretty much everything there is to know about this game. It is an extremely expansive game, and in some areas, pretty mysterious and hard to understand, but in this video, I'm going to be summarizing and reiterating facts and information that I have read from articles, or seen from videos of the game. I am by no means reading these articles word for word, as they are extremely long, and if I put it into my own words, it's not only better for myself to understand, but for you guys as well. I'm not going to be gathering all the information I learn and putting it into categories, instead I will be just listing facts as I find them, although they will have some relevance to previous facts. Now let's put this long intro behind us and start talking about the game. Hello Games, the company who created No Man's Sky, likes to describe this game as a quote-unquote open universe science fiction sandbox. The main aspect of No Man's Sky is flying around the 18 quintillion planets there are to explore, landing on whichever one you want, discovering species, and acquiring tools and resources. In terms of the actual game and what you'll be doing, there are three main branches of gameplay. You have combat, mining, crafting, and trading, and exploration. You can do as little or as much of each branch as you want. With combat, your character has a multi-tool that can scan objects, mine materials, and also act as your weapon. Your ship can also carry a weapon. There are a variety to choose from depending on what type of ship you have. Just like the plants and animals, your ship is also procedural. So there is no other ship that is exactly like yours. Weapons are, of course, used against hostile targets. These include aggressive animals, pirates in space, or sentinels. Although you can be an aggressive person, you can also be peaceful and choose to not fight against these beings. If you choose to destroy the terrain of a planet, sentinels will follow and try to attack you. These sentinels are sort of the guardians of the universe in No Man's Sky. They attack you for defense, not because they are aggressive. To continue with the combat aspect of the game, you can upgrade and discover new weapons through blueprints. Blueprints can be found in planets in almost any location, they can also be bought through trading posts. You can acquire currency through killing sentinels, or more interestingly, completing missions for an aligned military race. Dying on the ground causes you to lose all your items you acquired while on that planet. This does not include your multi-tool spaceship, etc. While dying in space causes you to lose nearly everything including your ship, so you are forced to start again with a basic ship. On planets, nearly everything is a resource. These can be either traded or stored for further use. Although not all planets have the same resources, and some resources are rare and harder to gather than others. Some resources can be rare in one solar system while being abundant in another. You will need to learn this in order to get the most bang for your buck when trading your resources. The rarer the resource, the more money you will earn from it. The star in the solar system you are in could give some hints as to what resources are rare in that system, since all elements in a solar system come from the star. There are said to be many types of alien races that you'll be able to trade with. You can also build reputations with these races. Whether you are friendly with them or hostile, the choice is yours. Being friendly with them gives you some bonuses and valuable goods. It will also help you understand their specific language. This is important for when you discover monoliths on planets. This isn't to say that being hostile towards a race doesn't yield bonuses as well. As stated before, one of the most well-known things about No Man's Sky is that it is procedurally generated. This does not mean random. Each thing that is generated must follow some rules, or procedures. Although Sean Murray, the CEO of Hello Games, has stated many times that some planets and animals can be amazingly abstract, some can be very familiar, while others can be boring and uninspired. This is due to the nature of procedural generation. As you get closer to the center of the universe, animals, planets, and basically anything that can be procedurally generated is said to get stranger, more difficult, and harder to comprehend. If you are the first person to discover a species or a planet, other people who come across those things will be able to see that you were the first person to discover it. The main thing about this game is exploring. Explorers use scanners on their multi-tool and ships to scan life forms, resources, planets, and points of interest. More powerful scanners are capable of scanning more powerful species and whatnot. Explorers are also interested in upgrading their ship's warp drive. This allows them to travel to a wider range of planets, and in faster times. As you explore planets, the items you scan can be uploaded to a database for some currency, although if you die, you lose all the information you have not uploaded. While on planets, you do not have a map, only a compass. 
so getting lost and losing track of where your ship is is a very real possibility. Being lost is dangerous because nighttime on a planet is much more dangerous than daytime. Temperatures drop and the animals are more hostile. It can also take hours, even days, to walk around a planet completely. Yes, real in-life days, like 24 hours in the real world. So losing your ship can be an extremely dangerous thing. Not only can you upgrade weapons, but you can also upgrade your suit. This will allow you to run faster, jump higher, dive deeper. You can also upgrade your jetpack to fly further. Upgrading your suit also gives you better protection from animals and the elements. You can also build new devices such as flashlights and hacking devices. Not only this, but you can also combine resources to build even better weapons and use even better blueprints. It is important to also be upgrading and creating new gear as it is the only way to survive as you get closer to the center of the universe. While you can explore planets, another big part of the game is exploring space. When exploring space, you can fly normally, which requires no fuel but you move at a relatively slow speed. You can use your jump drive, which uses fuel and flies faster than normal, or you can use your warp drive. This requires warp fuel and is the fastest way to travel. In terms of travel time, going from one star to the next can take up to hours with your normal drive. Yes, real life hours. It can take 10 minutes-ish with your jump drive and can take a second or two with your warp drive. It is also said that within space there are mysterious objects that the player must explore for themselves. So in some cases, using your normal or jump drive could be beneficial. If you happen to be within sight of another player on a planet, which is very unlikely as there are 18 quintillion or so planets which are capable of being the size of Earth or even larger, then all the data between the two players is shared. So if one player destroys a rock, then the rock is destroyed for the other player. There is no major goal in No Man's Sky. There are minor objectives and you can set your own personal goals, but the only thing close to a main objective is to reach the center of the universe which is essentially the reason you're fighting, gathering, and exploring. It is to upgrade and discover enough in order to be capable of facing what lies in the center. So that concludes this video. I hope I did a decent job of going over what this game is about, although I'm only capable of brushing the surface of what this game has to offer. For anyone to truly understand this game, they need to experience it themselves. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.